Well, the time has come. We have all waited 13 years for a brand new Tool album. It has finally arrived. Does it measure up to what we expected it to be? Sonically, the album picks up where 10,000 Days left off. It spares no expense to the listener's ear whatsoever. While the album obviously contains Tool's signature sound, there are some groundbreaking changes to the band's sound with this release, which I think is needed. So what's the main differences upon the first few listens? I think there's two major, major differences, and the first one I'm going to mention a little bit is how heavy this album is. To me, it is the most heavy album in their discography. Secondly, Danny Carey's work on this album is front and center, and it is far more complex than we've ever heard from him. Now let's talk a little about the title track, Fear Inoculum. The album starts off with the title track, Fear Inoculum, and it starts off with a lot of atmosphere. Once the song kicks in, it sounds very familiar to us, and we know that we're listening to Tool, and this is a great example of what I'm going to call Tool by Numbers. Not only is it Tool by Numbers, this is telling us, the listeners, that we're going to have to sit back and enjoy what is going to be a long ride, and this song definitely foreshadows what the album is going to present to us. Following Fear Inoculum, we have the song called Numa. This is where I really started noticing that Danny Carey is full front and center with drums on this album. Numa is a slower, mostly instrumental song. The last three minutes of the song get very heavy and very beautiful at the same time. It's an amazing build up and release, which we're going to see a lot of that on this album. This track also introduces some keyboards midway through that have a very nice layer to the song. And Adam Jones's guitar solo in this song is nothing short but immaculate. This song really reminds me of Sism and 46 and 2. Coming up after Numa is a song called Invincible. Invincible was one of the two songs that Tool introduced to us before the release of the album. I'm going to go on record in saying that this is my second favorite song on the album. This song builds up to a huge galloping break that Tool are known for with a bass and guitar interplays. The song's climax blows me away. And just when you think everything is over and calming down, they come back with another two minutes of absolute heaviness and jamming. There are definite traces of Anima styling on this track, which contains some prominent synth action paired with Maynard's more angelic voice style. The end of the song kicks some absolute ass. Following Invincible, we have the second track that Tool introduced to us before the release, and that song is called Descending. Descending is one of those tracks where every member of the band shines through. Maynard's voice on this song sound different and completely new to my ears. Possibly a lot more like a perfect circle than Tool, but it's something even different from that. Also, I might reference this song and call it the Danny Carey Show because the man is an absolute nut on the drum kit and he just, nobody can touch him these days in progressive metal. He's just that good. This has got some ultimate great rhythms from bassist Justin Chancellor as well that carry the song until we hit an absolute ripper of an Adam Jones soul towards the end. This song is pure brilliance. Now we carry on to the fifth track and this one is called Culling Voices. This is the slowest track on the album. And there's lots of ambience and soundscapes to this song. The song itself is very plodding and atmospheric, which is something Tool has always been good at and known for. It's a great song, but one of the more simple, simplistic ones on the album, and possibly the weakest song on the album. But having said that, it is still, still a great song. This track is all instrumental. The beginning of this track it really immediately makes me think of the intro to Pink Floyd's Time. Do you guys kind of get that vibe too? There's lots of natural sounding chimes and soundscapes, and it even has a little bit of a creepy vibe to it. 
Uh, one thing you guys have to do with this song is listen to it on a good pair of headphones because there's a lot of pounding of the different sounds around your head and it's it's kind of a trip in itself. Now the seventh and final track of the album, Tempest. I'm going to go on record to say that this is my personal favorite on the album and it would be, if they were a singles band, it would definitely be the single of the album. The first few minutes are a great sample platter of everything we love about Tool, with the amazing guitar solos, the amazing bass riffage, the outstanding drumming, and Maynard's vocal patterns. This is easily the heaviest song on the album, and it sounds like a mix of Undertow and Anima albums. The last five minutes are just, wow, completely breathtaking and emotional, and I wish it wouldn't end. Now the only one real complaint about this album, and I don't think it's much of a complaint, is other than it, did Tool take any risks when recording it? I don't think so, but did they really need to? I don't think they did. As with all brand new releases, there are going to be wrinkles that will only emerge after the record is lived and absorbed. But if you're wondering whether Fear Inoculum was worth the wait, then the answer is yes. If you're wondering whether it will touch your heart, soul, and spirit, the answer to that is also yes. This may not have been what we as fans were waiting for from Tool, but it doesn't have to be. It's Tool for the new generation, I guess you'd call it. You can pick it up, and it definitely sounds by Tools. Like I mentioned earlier, it's kind of Tools by number, which isn't a bad thing. Um, just don't maybe expect that this is going to be something groundbreaking that you've never heard before because it isn't. It is a great album and as a rating I'm going to give it 90%. Thanks guys and take care and we'll talk to each other real soon. Good night. Bye.